OK, that's the meeting recording now, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the local review body. I'm Councillor in Ireland. I'm chair of the local review body. I'd like to welcome um, elected members present today. We have Councillor Miller, Councillor Convery, Provost um, Fletcher. Uh, we also have Councillor Swift, who is sitting in, in the meeting, um, but um, Councillor Swift was not in it at the, um, the site visit earlier, but is in the meeting. And we also have, I believe, is the, um, Sharon, can you keep me right? Is it the applicant is yes. in the meeting yes. As, yes. as well? Um, we have Sharon McIntyre, who's the clerk to the local review body, and Andrew Benny is the independent planning advisor. Um, he has had no involvement in the processing of, of the planning application, which is before us today for review. We also have Ms. Siobhan Wilson is the legal advisor and responsible for preparing the local review body's decision notices and to provide advice as and when necessary for us. Um, do we have any apologies for absence? Yes, we have apologies from Councillors Cunningham, Councillor McLean and Councillor Swift. So Councillor Swift is sitting in the meeting, but he's not participating in the meeting just to confirm that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any declarations of interest in the item before us today? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, we have one case before us today, which is review 2021-10. It's the erection of one and a half storey side and rear extension, installation of three dormer windows to front and one to the rear at 7 Gilmerton Crescent, Newton Merns. Um, do we have, well, as members of the local review body agreed that we have enough information before us today to make a decision? Thank you very much. Yes. Can I move on then to turn to yourself, um, Andrew, if you wish to give some information on the review? Uh, thank you, Chair. The, the description of the proposals is a set out by, your, by yourself uh, with the plans and pages. 55 uh, of the agenda paper showing the property as existing and the plans on pages 61 and 62 of the papers providing details of the proposed extensions. Uh, no representations have been received in respect to the planning application, which is before you today for consideration. In summarising the reasons for the planning officer's decision, I would advise as follows. Uh, first of all, full details of the case officer's decision are set out on pages 17 to 24 of the agenda papers. Uh, within the report of handling. The report of handling indicates that the application requires to be assessed against the terms of policies D1 and D14 of the adopted local development plan and also the associated planning guidance, household of development design guide. The report of handling advises that when assessed against these policy matters, it is considered that the extension is not set back from the front building line, nor is it set below the ridge line of the existing dwelling house. And that as a consequence of this, the symmetrical character of the original dwelling house is lost to its detriment, with it being further considered that the introduction of the bay window to the front elevation of the extension further disrupts the symmetry of the original dwelling house. With regards to the proposed dormer windows, the report of handling indicates that they are not wholly set within the roof plane and three dormer windows which are proposed to the front of the dwelling house do not align with the main elements of the lower proportion of the front elevation thus further disrupting the character of the original dwelling house. These various considerations are reflected within the three stated reasons for the refusal of the application. In summary, I would comment on the following matters put forward in support of the appeal by the appellant, uh, full terms of which are set out within the case at pages 29 to 43 of the agenda papers. There are four points as follows. First of all, the current Dormer design offers a traditional pitched roof style roof appearance, which is similar to the pitch of the proposed house, which is not considered to have any adverse impact on the appearance of the house, noting that this style of dormer is commonly found across the council area, and that in terms of its scale and mass, sits in proportion to the roof. Second, the proposed dormers do not dominate or nor detract from the appearance of the roof and the houses in the local area, and are located to suit the 
the location of the proposed inner bedrooms with the height of the dormers being set to match the ridge height of the existing house and to maintain a suitable working headroom within the proposed rooms. Third, the requirement of, to set the extension back from the front building line would be at odds with the existing house with it being considered the proposed design will allow for the extension to blend better with the original house than would be the case if an obvious setback were to be incorporated into the design. The roof cannot be lowered due to the restricted nature of the available headroom. And finally, similar side extensions which do not feature a setback have been approved by the council in the immediate vicinity of the site with it being further noted that dormers similar to those proposed have been granted permission by the council on appeal. Could I remind members that they are required to determine this review in accordance with the relevant provisions of the adopted local development plan and also any other relevant material considerations which would, would include the terms of the emerging local development plan too. And finally, in the event of the review being upheld, the following condition should be attached to any permission thus granted. There's one condition. Development shall not commence until samples of the external finishing materials to be used on the proposed development have been submitted to and approved in writing by the planning authority and thereafter the development shall be implemented in accordance with the approved details. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to open it out to the local review body, Councillor Miller. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, I think I've said most of what I was going to say earlier on, but I'll just repeat it. The, the, the fact that the, the meeting that we had at Rooting Glen, which I think we, were, we all attended, uh, with the planners, and I know that the, the planning department are working on this, but I think that the planning officers should take cognizance of what was said at that meeting uh, when, when uh, uh, making a decision on a, a, a particular um, application. Uh, and the fact that this one is getting refused because it's been set, not been set back, the ridge line's not been lowered, and there's a gable end to it. All of these things are going to get changed, and from what you were saying this morning, Chair, it's going to get changed very soon. So I would suggest that, that if that policy that we were we discussed two, two, over two years ago had been taken into consideration. We, this this planning application would have been granted planning permission, and I, for one, would support that this application is granted planning permission. Thank you very much, Councillor uh, Miller. Uh, yet yeah, it was a it was a very productive meeting, and we were all all able to speak quite openly on what we liked and didn't like about the supplementary planning guidance. Andrew, is this any further forward? Before I I I'll, I'll, I will I'll. I want to turn to the provost, but is this any further forward in development? Because I think uh, we would all welcome seeing um, a draft of this or in further information coming out on it. Uh, yes, Chair, the drafts of the replacement guidance have been prepared and are moving forward to understand uh, discussions with uh, various members. So that, that's an advanced stage of preparation or advanced stage of production now. Uh, thank you very much. If we could be copied in in anything, uh, that would be very much appreciated yeah. as well, because we've we've waited quite a, a time for this. Th no, thank you very much. Um, Provost, do you wish you to come in? You're in mute, Jim. Jim, you're muted. Your pardon. I thought that was off. That. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. OK, I'll be as brief as I can. I mean, I think we all were a bit embarrassed in the past when we were looking at cases where, um, you know, we're operating under much stricter guidelines now because of the policies that we've put through in the council. Um, and when it was a bit more liberal, there's obviously other houses either the same street or nearby with, um, you know, extensions, which, you know, the applicants would probably feel are near enough identical to their own. Um, I appreciate we, we have to have the revised guidance coming forward again, which might liberalise um, the position and might um, suit those who wish, um, you know, to have a bit more freedom in terms of how they extend their, their homes. 
But certainly looking at this particular um, application, it's well um, shielded from the road by a high hedge. There are no neighbour objections. And, you know, looking at the property across the road, which is not exactly similar because there's a garage, I think, as part of the extension and the one that we also viewed a few blocks up. I mean, it's very much in character with what's there already in the street. And it's very difficult when you look at the plans to think that it's actually going to have an, an adverse um, impact on the area. Um, you know, clearly if we were granting something which was way out of character and way different to what is there, then I think that would be a different matter. But I, I don't really have a problem with this because, um, the, frankly, the existing house probably needs modernised. It's needing a bit of cash spent in it. And uh, looking at the plans and looking, with, looking at what's already there, um, I don't think this would um, detract from the character of the area in any way. So I would be minded to support the appeal from the, the applicant. Thank you very much, Corbis. Uh, Councillor Congrey. Thanks very much, Chair. I just basically wanted to back up everything that Councillor Miller and the provost was saying, but I don't have any any issues with this at all. And I move that we just um, we pass it. Thank you very much, Councillor Convery. Um, I would like to actually second that uh, move that I think it's that we overturn the, the decision and um, give the planning, give permission for the planning um, to go ahead. Um, with that, that would be subject to the condition as planned. Is, is everyone happy with the condition as it was read out earlier on? I think it's a pretty standard. Um, one, uh, yeah, no, I'm in complete agreement. I couldn't believe I was reading that it was incongruous feature in the streetscape and detriment to the character of the area. So unless anyone's otherwise minded. No, thank you very much. Sharon, can I pass back to yourself? Yes, yeah, so I'll just confirm the decision of the committee, which was to re reverse the officer's decision and approve planning permission subject to the suggested congestion by the planning advisor. Yes, can I add as well that I do think, I don't think it's contrary to policy D1 and D14 um, and it's not in Congress and it, it's not to the de detriment and um, it certainly the extension is not looking as if it's going to dominate and overwhelm. It was just in case you were looking for anything on that. Uh, Councillor Miller. Thanks, Sharon. That is in the sh the sh Thanks, Chair. Uh, I, I do have uh, some sympathy with the planning officer because they were uh, looking at the the policy as it was, I think it was eight or nine years ago. So I can understand why it was knocked back, but I, I really think that because of what we, we discussed and the other plans were there, that should be taken into consideration at the back of folks' minds. But I do have some sympathy for the planning officer. Hopefully we can move the changes forward soon. No. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was the only item of business that we we had today. Um, thank you for your time, and I'll see you all at the next meeting. Okay. Thanks very much, Chair. Bye. Bye. Thank you.